Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart,
Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that, rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant, Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, 
that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent then and be converted that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. Our reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. And then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. As he said this, <clears throat> he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, have you anything here to eat? And they gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, thus, it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, come back in time with me. Rewind the clock 2,000 years and stand with me in the streets of old Jerusalem. It's 33 AD, and it's the Saturday after Passover. The city is quiet. It is the Sabbath, after all. But it's the perfect time for us to conduct a little survey in the streets of old Jerusalem. Because it being the Sabbath means that the only people out and about are the visitors from the other nations. With clipboard in hand, we go with this single question. Can the dead come back to life? And moving through the, the twisting streets, we come to the market district of old Jerusalem. And there, looking a little bored at his stall, is a merchant from Egypt with gum and balm and resin and very, very few customers. So he's happy to see us, a little chance to talk and visit. We present him our clipboard, promise that we'll enter his name into a drawing later on. And we ask him, can the dead come back to life? And he, he adopts a very solemn expression. And he says, my friend, we speak of the dead coming back to life. It is only the gods who do so. He would go on to tell the beautiful story of Osiris, the god who was slain and then raised back from the dead. We might start to get a little nervous, being Christians from 2024, hearing about this story, until the Egyptian merchant goes on to say, and that is why the Nile River comes back to life every spring with the floods. For Osiris, in coming back to life, likewise brings back to life the greenery of my native Egypt. And we might press him as we fill out our clipboard and say, and when exactly did this happen? with Osiris. He would look confused because he wouldn't understand the question at all. Well, no, I, I've told you the story. That's the story. Don't bother me with these details. And then another customer comes along and we get out of his way. 
But one survey respondent isn't going to be enough for our purposes. So we take our clipboard and go looking elsewhere in old Jerusalem and talking idly on a street corner outside of the Roman barracks, we find a philosopher, a man of learning from Athens. We manage to catch his attention, and being a Greek philosopher, he's always looking for novelty and something new to discuss. He gladly engages with us with our question, can the dead come back to life? He strokes his long beard thoughtfully and says, the great Socrates said that the soul was in the body as in water as is in a vessel. And when the vessel is broken, the water flows freely and returns to that great sea, which is the realm of ideas. And we look at him blankly and we say, so that's a no then. And the Greek gets a little flustered with us because we're obviously a little unwashed, a little unsophisticated, and he says, as patiently as he can muster, no, see, the soul, once it's free from the body, does not return. The body only holds the soul back. So don't worry about death. It is just a transition from one stage to the next. Then he starts speaking in a lot of very fancy uh, $10 words in Greek, and we excuse ourselves. I'm like, okay, well, we'll talk to you later. It's getting a little late in the day now, and the sun is beginning to set. And the city is starting to wake up as the Jewish citizens make their way out of doors and start to go about their day as the Sabbath comes to an end. And so we come across one Jewish worshiper who's on her way to pray at the temple area. We ask her our question, can the dead come back to life? And her eyes brighten. And she says to us, well, of course, the dead come back to life. And we get very excited. This is the first definite answer we've gotten all day. And then she goes on to say, the dead come back to life at the end of all things. When the Messiah comes and history is ended and all of God's enemies are defeated, then all the just will rise from the dead. And we look at her, and with a bit of a grimace, we say, so not any time soon, then. And she gestures towards the market district and the Roman barracks, and with a knowing smile says, not soon enough. Now come back with me to 2024. We've got this survey in hand. The dead coming back to life as a matter of myth the soul escaping the body as a matter of philosophy, the resurrection of the just at the end of history. All of these ideas about what happens after death shows brothers and sisters that the resurrection of Jesus Christ was just as unimaginable then as it is now. The resurrection of Jesus Christ happened in history in the year 33 A.D. on the Sunday after Passover. That the resurrection of Jesus Christ was not a matter of the soul escaping the body, but happened in the flesh itself. For to prove that he was himself, he showed his wounds. Wounds that no soul, no ghost would have. And rather than happening at the end of time, it happens now. Not just in 33 AD on the Sunday after Passover, but right now. In April of 2024 in Glen Ellen. And not just for Egyptians and Greeks and Jews, but for us. Jesus comes to us, risen from the dead, and speaks to us, saying, Peace. Be with you, not in a far distant future, but here and now. For that is the only way that the name of Christ has power to forgive sins. Because when we invoke the name of Jesus, we invoke the name of one who is alive. 
not a memory, not someone who we look back with fondness on, but one who has power to do what he promises. Because, brothers and sisters, Christ is risen. This motivated the early church, this mystery of the resurrection, this unimaginable fact was always on the lips and hearts of the early church. They greeted one another with this stupefying, incredulous wonder. That one would say to another, Christ is risen. And the response would come, He is risen indeed. Can we just practice that right now, you and I, here in April of 2024 in Glen Ellen? Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. indeed, indeed. And that's the key word, brothers and sisters, in fact, in reality, that we are gathered here on this Sunday in April of 2024, not because of some myth, not because of some abstract philosophy, not because of some distant future, but because of what has happened indeed. Because if the resurrection did not happen, what are we doing here? If the resurrection of Jesus is just a myth, it has no power to save us. If the resurrection of Jesus is just a matter of abstract philosophy that does nothing to heal us of our wounds. If the resurrection of Jesus is still off in the future that does no help for us now. But he is risen indeed. He is risen in fact. He eats that piece of baked fish in front of his incredulous disciples to show that he is back in the flesh. And it is just as unimaginable now as it was then. And it is no less real now as it was then. Brothers and sisters, the sheer wonder of the resurrection, the novelty of it, the mold-shattering reality of it, allows for no other explanation than this. He is risen. He is risen indeed. In our history, death has been defeated. In our bodies, Jesus shares his victory. In our lives, his victory heals our sins. No myth, no philosophy, no distant future does what the Lord God has done for us. What other life is worth living than one stronger than death? What other name is worth praising than the name of Jesus? What other story is worth sharing than the good news? So once again, brothers and sisters, Christ is risen. risen Alleluia. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, 
and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, and I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God the Father sent his only Son into the world that we might have life through him. We beg him now for the fullness of life as we pray. For the church throughout the world, <clears throat> and through her teachings and witness, many may embrace the truth of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civil leaders and lawmakers, that they will allow the light and wisdom of Christ to illumine their decisions and enact laws and policies that are wise and just. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christian families, that they will sanctify Christ as Lord and in their hearts and homes and be open to the gift of religious vocations among their children. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for an increased reverence and awe at the gift of the Holy Eucharist, especially as we prepare for the National Eucharistic Congress in July, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who be participating in the Illinois March for Life this week, that they may have safe travels, be an effective and powerful witness to the dignity and sanctity of human life from conception to natural death, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, that they may know the Lord's healing of mercy and love. For Father Rich Simon, baby Eli Stelgis, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And our brothers and sisters who have died may share in the heavenly banquet prepared for them by the Lord. For Rachel Zito, Judy Fitzpatrick, Joanne Wetzel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the intention of this Mass, Beth Honey Kilker. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Most merciful Father, reveal to us your saving power and preserve us always in your grace, for we trust in you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exalted Church, and as, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, Grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the Lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body, 
and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Petronel, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our announcements this morning. The funeral arrangements for Judy Fitzpatrick are as follows. Visitation will be on Sunday, April 14th, from 2 to 6 p.m. at Williams Camp Funeral Home in Wheaton. The funeral mass will be offered on Monday, April 15th, at 9.30 a.m. here at St. Pet's. The funeral arrangements for Joanne Wessel are as follows. Visitation will be on Saturday, April 20th, in the church here at St. Petronell at 10 a.m., followed immediately by the funeral mass at 11 a.m. And again, that's Saturday the 20th. Requests for assistance from Mary's Closet have increased significantly in the past few months, and our supplies are dwindling. We would be very grateful if you could donate an item or two from our critical needs list published in this week's bulletin. Thank you for your generosity. Parish offices will be closed on Wednesday, April 17th to allow our staff to attend the Illinois March for Life. And lastly, following this Mass, the parish school is hosting Donut Sunday in the Parish Life Center. A free will offering is asked to help defray the cost of the donuts. All are welcome. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.